Hey everyone, so uh, let's get back to reading uh, Hamid Asraf. Um, how did the Siakal insurrection begin? An analyst of one year of urban and mountain guerrilla warfare. I'm going to read a little bit more of the, you know, the translator's note here. Um, we read some of it through the introduction. This is going to be part one. Uh, let's lead a, just give some more context on, you know, um, on Hamid Asraf. Let's see. This pamphlet is the most precise account by an eyewitness of Siakal insurrection that is viewed as a crucial point in the history of the Iranian revolutionary Marxist movement. Though this uprising was severely crushed by the Pahlavi regime, it was known as, si as Siakal epic in Iranian revolutionary literature. The insurrection, while the regime boasted about turning the country into an island of peace, inspired a whole generation and ignited the fire of a relatively long urban guerrilla movement that recruited a large number of university students and activists. It, 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 no, sorry. It, had also, it had also a broad and deep impact on the Iranian literature, poetry, cinema, etc. The event, apart from its repercussions, was important because a number of activists showed the courage to go beyond cliches and seek new forms of organization and struggle with combining the experience of the world revolutionary movement in domestic concrete conditions. You know, as a child, I stuttered, uh, so sometimes I, I have trouble. There's certain, uh, if it starts on a vowel, like ah, I have trouble doing that sometimes. I'll get hung up and have to, like, recalibrate myself and think how to make the ah sound, like, you know. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to get into this. This is uh, part one of this. Uh, we already read the introduction. This is part one from Makar Valley to Siakal. A six-member team of mountain vanguards started their expedition from Makar Valley near Chalice towards the west on September 6, 1970. Appointments were arranged to allow the team to, com to allow the team communicate with cells and towns during passing through the areas where local comrades resided in foothills. The group arranged its movements in highland forests of Gilan and Mazan Mazandaran provinces from west to east in order to survey the region from geographical and military standpoints. The group had planned to start military option, operations as immediately as the preliminary reconnaissance that allowed the team to have well-organized mobility completed. The operation was to assail a military station and disarming its personnel. The team should immediately leave the area in order to escape the expected reaction of the enemy, as it was well known that after the first guerrilla operation, villagers who didn't have a clear understanding of guerrillas would not respond favorably. We knew only that continuing military operations could gradually impress residents of rural areas and encourage them to support the movement morally and physically. Based on these two understandings, the military reaction of the regime and the absence of quick support from villagers, we had decided that the team should leave the area immediately after the operation and inflict the next blow in another area where the enemy did not expect another operation. The objective of the operations in this phase was to declare the beginning of armed struggle and changing the political atmosphere of the country. In brief, the first strategic objective was to change the political atmosphere and set forth the idea of armed struggle before political organizations and put an end to the long-lasted debates on this matter. This phase should be carried out by elite guerrillas with the ability of considerable mobility, performing small but spectacular attacks and av avoiding engagement in, in heavy conflicts with enemy forces. Preparations for this plan had been made, and the guerrillas, relying on their own self-sacrifice, spirit, and revolutionary faith, had prepared themselves to adapt to these conditions. Acquaintance and adaption to neighborhoods and routes in the forests and mountains, providing food reserves and individual and collective requirements, were the matter that would be handled little by little. These are all technical issues of the first phase of the struggle in the mountain that could be dealt with well. But the jungle group had to face other problems. It was thought that armed propaganda in the northern towns located close to the center of operations should coincide with the operation in the mountain. We even talked about the priority of operations in urban areas. However, the jungle group had limited resources and energy, and therefore could not solve both problems, especially because urban cadres had not yet received military training, and our professional cadres were no more than one or two. Another matter was that the group had set forth the plans that required more energy. 
Under these circumstances, contacting other revolutionary groups was really necessary. Therefore, we began regular meetings with the group of comrade um, Ahmad Sadeh. Owing to security considerations and counterintelligence requirements, the relationship between the two groups developed very cautiously and was focused on theoretical issues of the Iranian Revolution. Ahmad Saleh group, based on experiences of the Brazilian Revolutionary Movement, recommended organizing guerrilla warfare in urban areas. The group favored the idea that the movement should, should first flourish in cities, and from then on, the struggle should begin in the countryside, based on the expanded movement in cities. In other words, they believed that the struggle's focus sh should, in the second phase, be shifted from the city to the countryside. On the other hand, the jungle group suggested the simultaneous beginning of the warfare in urban and rural areas. Our argument was based on the propaganda character of armed struggle at its beginning. We thought the task should be carried out in both town and countryside. Albeit, we gave priority to the urban warfare, but this priority was tactical because we thought operations in cities would prepare public opinion to pay attention to the, to the operations in the mountains and would render it greater influence. But the comrades in Ahmad Sada group, the time preference had a strategic character. At any rate, connections between the two groups focused on theoretical issues throughout fall 1970. The mountain guerrilla band proceeded toward the west, and the two groups had not yet reached agreement. To Ahmad Sada, to Ahmad Sada group, organizing the mountain struggle was impractical, and hold that only based on the energy accumulated in urban warfare we can continue the struggle in mountains. And really, resources of their group were not to the extent to let organized attempts in urban areas. In fact, they did not have much experience in the urban guerrilla warfare. And on the other hand, and as more important matter, they were not in the picture on our resources and our practical steps. We decided to reveal our measures after reaching theoretical agreement with them. However, counterintelligence precautions led to prolongation of debates and failure to conclusive final agreement. The commander of the Mountain Guerrilla Band, Comrade Safai, was ready to initiate the planned operations. He specially counted on the possibility of recruiting men from Ahmad, Sada, Ahmad Saleh Group. Furthermore, Ahmad Saleh Group had at its disposal means in some towns of Mazandaran province that could settle major problems facing the Mountain Guerrilla Band. Therefore, Comrade Safai continuously urged us to reach an agreement with Ahmad Saleh Group. And this happened in early January 1971. However, Ahmad Saleh Group still based the possibility of operations in the mountain on startling operations in towns and believed that the mountain band should wait for the organization and preparation of urban cadres. On the other hand, we favored simultaneous simultaneous because the mountain band was in a fit condition to carry out operation and surely problems cropped up if we failed to trigger off operations as scheduled. These possible problems were such as possible danger arising from lengthening the, rec the reconnaissance period and unwanted premature clashes with gen gendarmerie forces. Demoralization of mountain cadres resulting from unlimited waiting. For these reasons, the commander of the Mountain Guerrilla Band found it wise set about the combat, especially because the commander's mistrust of the successful settlement of theoretical debates between the two groups and a reaching possible rapid agreement was growing. Ultimately, urban cadres of the Mountain Guerrilla Band had asked for, two month re asked for a two-month respite to organize men and prepare them to join the band. However, the plan did not proceed as expected regarding the unprofessional career of Ahmad Sede's group cadre, and the fact that they resided in various cities and towns and not all of them were convinced of an agreement that caused further persistence of debates. The two-month respite ended and we had not yet taken practical measures, though we expected a change to happen soon. The Mountain Guerrilla Band, in the meanwhile, carried out further recon reconnaissance expedition in eastern areas of Mazandaran province. That was beyond the plan. This extra expedition finished in February. The band could no longer continue its activities in the same mode. It should either retreat to the city or start the operations. Up to this date, the number of members of the band, which still relied on its own limited resources, increased to nine. 
But one of the men was missed in the forest and searched for him for several days came to nothing. The Mount Gorilla Band carried out two reconnaissance expeditions. One lasted two miles and the other two months, that's a, mis, mis, a mistype, and another one and a half month. That covered from Chalice Valley to Kalakal, east of Mazandaran, and from Chalice Valley to Ramian in the east of Mazandaran. And were ready to engage in the action. They had high morale and had and had grown strong, vigorous. Let me start that sentence again. They had high morale and had grown strong, vigorous, and were now full-blown experienced guerrillas. At any rate, the commander of the Mountain Guerrilla Band informed that he would trigger off operations in February, despite the hesitation of urban cadres. Our urban segment had not yet fully prepared plans for operations in cities, but we were prepared to perform attacks with propaganda purposes. In January, one of the cadres of the Jungle Guerrilla Band, who was a con conscript officer in the army, and for this reason had assigned his political responsibilities to another comrade, was arrested for reasons impertinent to the Guerrilla Band. He was Comrade Gafur Hasimpur, who had broad information about our small group. He was tortured for 20 days that led to his murder. Under torture, he finally made some confessions. These confessions provided clues for finding other members of the jungle group. Other members of the group who did not expect the exposure of information on activities of the group, we thought because the comrade had been arrested for matters impertinent to our group, he would not have revealed information on the group, but this was a serious miscalculation and the members whose identity had been discovered by the enemy should go underground as promptly as possible. We're surprised and arrested. Waiting for a long time and the lack of a strong underground urban organization at, the, at that time led to disastrous consequences on February 2nd. On this day, the planned assault of the security forces of the regime began against us. Within 24 hours, three comrades in Gilan and five in Tehran were arrested, and so only five out of the whole urban members of the group survived. In fact, our urban network was disbanded. Now a worthy member from Ahmad Salai group named Comrade Farhuli joined the countryside. Band and the number of band increased to nine. Joined the countryside band and the number of the band increased to nine. They moved from east to east of Mazandaran to Siakal area by cars and deployed in southern hills of Siakal. They lie in mountains and prepared to start operations. On February 5th, we contacted comrades of the countryside band and informed them of the received blows. Neither we nor any member of the countryside band knew another member, Comrade Nayeri, who was a school teacher in Siakal Hills and knew the location of hidden food storages, had been arrested too. Of course, this comrade was not aware that the countryside band had taken position near Siakal. We still uninformed of the arrest came to the conclusion that we would be arrested soon. Therefore, the countryside band decided to inform him that he should hide himself from the police. On February 8th, the date that was planned for a raid on the Jindamari station, Comrade Hadi Bande Kola descended from mountain to meet Comrade Nayeri, the young teacher in Shah Hulzlat village, and tell him about the imminent threat of arrest and help him escape. However, he was unaware of the damage which inflicted upon the urban organization had been extended to the rural organization, and the Jindamuri personnel had kept a watch on Nayeri's abode. At any rate, Comrade Hadi Bandekola got caught by the enemy after an armed clash. The comrades in the heights heard the shooting and decided to start the attack according to the plan in order to release the captured comrade. On the dawn of February 8th, they left the camp and after taking the control of a minibus in Siakal Lunak, in, in Siakal Lunak Road, waged attacks on Siakal Jin, Gendarmerie Station. The main target was the Gendarmerie Station and Forestry Station. The whole inventory of the Jim, Gendarmerie Station, including nine rifles and machine guns, were confiscated. The deputy commander of the Gendarmerie Station and another person were killed in operations. The comrades retreated to Southern Heights without suffering any casualties. Furthermore, the arrested comrade was not found in the Gendarmerie Station because the commander of the station had already transferred him to Rasht. From February 8th to February 27th, 1971, the mountain band was the subject of concentrated attacks of the enemy. 
They fought bravely and destroyed more than 60 officers and privates of the enemy army. Okay, so that was uh, section one of How Did the Sea of Call Insurrection Begin by Hamid Israf. So yeah, follow me on uh, Marxist Saw, you know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Medium, Tumblr, all of Marxist Saw. And uh, feel free to reach out to me. And y'all have a, a great day. Todara goi.